Oxford was created to form a network of talented and ambitious women across the university and we aim to uplift and support our almost 3,000 members through the provision of skills workshops, an international mentorship programme and speaker events. Thank you so much for joining the Women in Technology panel tonight. We have Flavilla Fongang, Jeanette Carlson and Matilda Anderson today with us. My name is Flavela Fongeng and I am the founder of Three Colors Wolf, a creative branding and marketing agency working with technology companies. I'm also the founder of TLA Black Women in Tech and people also know me as the podcast host of Tech Brand Talk, where I have amazing conversations with tech entrepreneurs within the world of tech. I'm the founder and CEO of New Media 2.0 in the UK, a strategy and innovation consultancy in the tech sector. Uh, I'm also the founder and CEO of Tech Nordic Advocates, which is Northern Europe's biggest tech startup ecosystem and actually a women in tech network. And we run Europe's only international mentoring program for women in tech founders. Pretty re recently, I was announced the um, Tech Girl of the Year by Microsoft. I've also been a part of building a network called Pink Programming, which is one of Sweden's largest networks for female developers. I don't have a tech background, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not all. I know nothing about technology. And I, if somebody asked me to code anything, I would not know. I'm a branding and marketing person, but I work in technology. And I think that's the biggest misconception people make, that you have to have an engineer or math degree whatsoever. Being in tech doesn't mean you have to be a computer scientist. So, so Matilda can speak for herself, right, about what, what your skills and, and so on. But that's not, I mean, there are there are headhunters in tech, there are branding and marketing people in tech. I'm an economist, I'm not a technologist, yeah. right? Uh, I'm a strategist. There's lots of different roles in tech. It's so important that we have all these different aspects of the tech industry. lack of female role models in tech because us girls we need role models we need to see ourselves in others right and if we don't see other women in tech we naturally draw the conclusion that this is not for us and then of course um it's a very male dominated environment so there's a lot of unconscious bias uh it's hard to pitch to a, a panel full of men so you tend to get put off by that so we need more women in, in at the investor level generally and the whole ecosystem is, is is unbalanced when you ask women in studies you know what are the other hindrances women tend to say we lack the right skills um which actually i can guarantee you they don't lack skills at all uh they don't lack skills any more than the men in the similar founder positions lack skills it's just us girls again we tend to be insecure and you know this from recruitment and hr women don't apply for jobs unless they think i can meet every single criterion on the job application right whereas men apply for the same jobs if they can meet six or seven max don't let men intimidate you because quite often actually this kind of women <laughs> find that so often so don't let me feel like because they outnumber, they, you know, they're, they're stronger. No, they're not. It's just because they're more of them. So they're more confident. But if you walk in the room, you know, and with confidence, trust me, they will respect you as much. But for me, jumping into and learning all these mathematics and and how computers work and the binary system, it was, it was, everything was new for me. Many people actually ask me, it's like, aren't you too old to learn how to code? Aren't you like, um, don't you have to be like, five years old when you start coding for the first time. And I, I'm just like, I was 22 and it's not like life ends when you're 20. It's always a constant learning and it's learning something is hard. Keep on pushing yourself, keep on being, having this will of learning, improving. And I mean, if you have the right mindset, if you keep on doing it, like anything, you will learn it in the end. So the future of, the future of technology, I don't know, but I know that one thing people realizing that everybody now has a power of making a change, that's one thing for sure. We're looking at democratization of, of power. I think that's what is exciting. You know, if you think about just cryptocurrency, if you think about someone in a small village who want to create something that will help their community, that's what is beautiful. That's why I also chose to work in technology because, you know, scalable impact. And that's what is beautiful. Personalizations like to create a world where everything is more or less on demand. 
as we can see that like, before you turned on the television and you hope that something good would be on nowadays we have netflix people can embrace their differences and, and personalities in a better way than this old one size fits all as we could see before accelerating pace of technology innovation i think is, is one trend another trend i think is really important is the pervasiveness and that's what hopefully the future holds um, is more people can benefit from technology.